Hey, we're almost at the end of this chapter, and um, moving on to modeling floors, ceilings, and roofs. If uh, you're not um, involved in the exterior portion, well, you can skim over this. But it's important because it applies to a lot of different, uh, a lot of different aspects of architecture. We're uh, at using the adaptive component family. So far, the examples look at using the UV grid to test, to, to nest in curtain wall pattern based families. However, there will be situations where you may want to manually place a panel, specifically at border conditions where you may need to construct custom panels. To do this, use the adaptive component functionality that is available to you in the pattern based curtain panel. This functionality is designed to handle cases where components need the flexibility to adapt to many unique related conditions. This functionality also addresses the problems of creating and placing pattern component panels, triangular, pentagonal, hexagonal, and so on, on non-rectangular and irregularly spaced grids. In the following exercise, you will create an adaptive panel and manually place it along the border of a divided surface. Create a simple pattern-based curtain panel family. And we're going to use a template for that. Families, new. Notice the directory tree. Curtain panel pattern-based. And use the rectangular grid pattern. And if we uh, look at this, we haven't created a surface at all. We haven't created a surface yet. So, we have to do that. All right, so um, if we look here, just to notice, Select one of the four adaptive points and notice that each point has a number from one to four. One, four, three, two. So it's counterclockwise. Select one of the points in the properties palette. Select one of the points. From the property palette, change the show placement number parameter to always. Show placement number parameter, always. Well, now it's constantly on. Placement parameter number. Select all the reference planes in the family and choose create form. Well, we could just grab them all, but we get the reference lines. So we can filter those out. Filter out the reference lines. Now we have the four adaptive points. at me. I uh, hopefully didn't make a mistake. The reference planes, not the adaptive points, right? The reference planes, not the adaptive points. And then create form, surface. Now, Download and open the file C13 Stitch Surface Project RFA from the book's webpage, Book Companion. So, file, open, family, Stitch Surface. So, again, if you downloaded it, depending on where you downloaded it, you'll uh, have to grab it. Stitched Surface Project Family. So let's get this one. Let's open this one up. It's going to upgrade a couple of years. Okay, so now let's go back to the family that we were creating. And 
just make sure we uh, are prepared. Load my adapter. Well, we haven't saved this yet. I'm supposed to save this. Um, after we create this form, um, you have to save it. It did save to Family 96, so um, it's saying save it as my adaptive panel. So file, save as, family. And where you put your panels is important. I'm putting it back in the downloadable directory where I downloaded all the other uh, book companion files. Technically, if you have a network server, a network, or a local hard drive, or a cloud uh, server, a website, you have to start thinking about where you want to keep your families. Now, a word to the wise, Revit, when looking for families, keeps them in the root directory that we discussed. That's something you may want to consider. Something you may want to consider. And again, your templates are going to dictate that. Uh, your, uh, your templates. So I don't want to go back off on a tangent, but uh, let's just see this as uh, my adaptive panel. My adaptive panel. And you hit save. So then download and open the C13 Stitch, uh, Stitch Surface Project, which we did. Now load my adaptive panel into that family, into this family. Well, we could do that from the family itself. Load into project. There's only, um, there's really no technically pro no project open, but it considers not a family, a project. Um, this is a family, not an RVT, not an R, um, an RFT. Uh, it's an RFA, it's another family, which will most likely be loaded into a project. We're, ne we're going to nest one family into another family by uh, going to that family and loading it into the project. Okay. Notice that in C13 Stitch Surface Project, the UV grid has been enabled, as well as the nodes at the intersections of the UV grid. That's good. You will use these nodes to snap your panel. Locate the families category in the project browser. And expand the curtain panel tree and you'll find the My Adaptive panel. Drag it into the 3D view. With the panel attached to your mouse pointer, place the pointer onto one of the nodes on the subdivided surface to place the first point. The re place the remaining points onto the corresponding nodes. Observe how the panel will adapt based on its placement in the surface division. Okay. Let's zoom out a little bit. It isn't that sticky. Well, that's something that you're going to uh, you're going to have to experiment with, but that's uh, that's pretty uh, helpful. You're able to utilize each of the nodes, the adaptive points, to apply the skin, if you will, to the pattern. Now, let's just double check that you can edit it once it's in, and sure enough. Um, you can't. 
So, if you if you miss one, you drag it in, and you got it at your fingertips. Place it here. Place it here. Using the adaptive points. Okay, and that concludes that exercise. So uh, the next exercise is scheduling pattern-based panels. And this is important, obviously, for quantification purposes. So although this is very beautiful and it's uh, really interesting as far as uh, getting this to, to look uh, just right, the bottom line is obviously going to come down to, well, how much is it going to cost to build this? I know how much I'm paying you to figure it out, because I can't. So now that we figured it out, how much is it gonna cost me? Because I don't have the deep pockets. I don't have the deep pockets to, to fork up the cash to have this curtain wall fabricated. I don't have the cash for that. You have to have deep contractors to be an owner or to be a contractor. You have to have deep pockets. I'm on a shoestring budget, but that being said, um, <laughs> I hope you like the thread. I aim to please with my threads. <laughs>